Hi there. This is a short video for students that are beginning work in an engineering design course. In this video, we're going to talk about the concept of publicly disclosing your work on your design course project and how that public disclosure may impact the potential to get patent rights that cover any invention you create during your course. I'm Bryce Pills. I teach at the law school in the Entrepreneurship Clinic. So let's first briefly discuss the concept of patents. A patent is one form of intellectual property that's often used to protect technological innovations. A patent may be important to you or your sponsor because after the completion of your design coursework, the person that holds rights in your coursework may decide to pursue obtaining a patent in order to provide protection for your invention if they are to later try to commercialize the technology you developed in your course. Now, one of the criteria for obtaining a patent is that the invention must be new. In the patent field, we often call this novelty. It's important to understand that the newness or novelty of your invention is judged as of the date that you file an application to get a patent. The examiner is going to look as of this date and compare your invention against all of the public knowledge in this technical field. Now, it's important to understand that this public knowledge includes your own public disclosures. This means that if before you file an application to get a patent, you make a YouTube video, you publicly demonstrate or present your invention, you have a conversation with someone else in the field where it's clear you're, you're teaching them how to use the invention and you don't intend to keep the conversation confidential. If you write about your invention in a scientific journal and that's published, any of these things could be public disclosures. Public disclosures can harm your ability to later get a patent. In the United States, from the date you publicly disclose your invention, you have one year to file your application for a U.S. patent Otherwise, you cannot patent that invention. It's still wise to file a United States patent application as soon as you can, rather than waiting for this year to get close to expiring, because the United States has a first inventor to file patent regime, and so there's still an incentive to file a good patent application as soon as you practically can. In other jurisdictions, they don't have this one-year grace period. For example, in Europe, if you publicly disclose your invention even one day before filing a patent application, you can forever lose the ability to obtain a European patent on this invention. So being aware of potential public disclosures for an invention that's potentially patentable can be extremely important. So let's talk about a couple of things you can do if you're faced with potentially publicly disclosing the invention that you're creating during your design coursework. The first is to file a patent application, what we'd commonly call a provisional patent application, before you make the public disclosure. Remember that it's as of your filing of the application that the examiner will judge the newness of your invention. So any public disclosures that occur after you filed a patent application fully describing and enabling that invention do not harm the patentability of the invention. Now, filing a patent application can take several months and a lot of money to prepare because you normally use a patent attorney. So keep in mind that this isn't something you can quickly do before an imminent public disclosure, at least not easily. There are a variety of sources around campus to help you with uh, thinking about filing provisional patent applications. The Michigan Bar Association now has a pro bono patent clinic, and various law schools have pro bono intellectual property or entrepreneurship clinics that are available to help you. But again, understand these are going to take weeks and months to help you prepare a patent application if you're accepted to those programs. A second thing you can do to help avoid a public disclosure hurting your patent rights is to render the disclosure non-public. In other words, you're still going to tell someone about your invention, but you're going to make clear that the disclosure isn't for public purposes. One way to do this is to have a written agreement, commonly called a written non-disclosure agreement, or NDA, with the recipient of your information. Another way to do this is to, to tailor the conversation and the pr presentation in such a way that the people there implicitly understand that the disclosure is not for public purposes, that it's intended for educational purposes. Although there's no concrete guidance on the subject, most people feel that a presentation during the, the, the course of a class, a classroom presentation, would be non-public because the people in the class understand it's for educational feedback purposes and you're not turning the invention over to the public. 
One item that does occur commonly in engineering design courses is the end of semester design expo. And if you're taking part in the public portion of, of that design expo and you're fully teaching someone how to use your invention, then that probably is a public disclosure that you should be aware of. A third thing you can do to avoid a public disclosure harming your patent rights is to avoid the disclosure from being fully enabling. Recall that for another, in order for a public disclosure to hurt your patentability, it has to have enough detail that it teaches people in the field how to use your invention without a lot of experimentation. For many types of inventions, this would take a, a decent amount of detail. So one thing you can do is you can still talk about your invention generally. Perhaps you could describe the, the problem you're solving, um, generally how you solve the problem without going into a lot of detail, the market that's being addressed, and the benefits of your solution. And there'd be a good argument that that would not be a full public disclosure. Now, how much information is required to make a disclosure fully enabling, such that it's a patent-harming public disclosure, will really depend on the type of your technology. There are obviously some types of inventions that you could just hold up a sample of the invention, and that by itself would be a public disclosure. But this is one thing you can do, for example, in um, poster presentations to avoid providing the secret sauce of your invention such that your disclosure is not a patent-harming public disclosure. So these are three things you can do to address the issue of public disclosures. The main point is just to understand that if you are telling someone about your invention in sufficient detail that they could go and use your invention without a lot of experimentation, and if that disclosure is made to in such a way that people would believe it's public, that you're telling them about the invention and they're able to go and use it, then this is something you should be aware of because it could negatively impact your patent rights. And you're going to want to talk to your faculty member, your mentor, or the sponsor of your project to figure out what's the best way to proceed to make sure that the ability to later patent and commercialize your technology is preserved to the extent possible. And that's a general overview of the concept of public disclosures and how they can impact one's patent rights. It's also important to note that intellectual property issues differ for startups as compared to big companies. Startups are typically cash-strapped. Also, under lean startup methodology, entrepreneurs are coached to go out.